in Norway's. So you guys on Discord, my Discord server, you have the link in my uh, description and maybe in the comments also, pro most probably in the comments too. You guys choose that I shall do a video about the, uh, actually a series about the Roman Empire instead of a video about Stephen the Great or the documentary about Bucharest in Soviet times. So yeah, you fucking armies, <laughs> let's get into it, I guess. <laughs> Sorry for calling you enormous boys. <clears throat> the history of Senatus Populus K. Romanus. Let's get into it. Let's shall we? <clears throat> Everything begins with the with Italy, with the peninsula, with Italic Peninsula. You guys know it is where uh, Italy, where pizza is born and uh, spaghetti, spaghetti mafia, everything like that, mamma mia. <clears throat> On the Italic Peninsula there were living people and they were different and having different jobs based on where they're living in. If you're living, uh, if you were born in places like, you know, where it's basically just plain grass, and plain, uh, uh, plain, plain in general, yeah. You will end up usually to be a shepherd, or I don't know, farmer, something like that. While if you were born around the river, around the city, in in a city around the river on the Italian Peninsula, you will usually become a fisherman or a or something like that, or become a salesman in other cities that are connected with the same river. You know, the basic stuff. And you know, there are also a lot of different uh, ethnicities around the peninsula, where the Celts that were coming from the north, the Greeks coming from the east, the Carthaginians, the Carthaginians, or how the fuck you call them, aka Phoenicians, Coming from the south, from northern Africa, you had the uh, Apuli people living in the southern part of the peninsula, the Italics more in the center, you know, around those mountains. You had the Etruscans living in the, the west coast side in, in north, the Veneti people, the Lingurians, you know, you know those. And Rome was located right here right where all italics were and that's also why the language that rome speaks it's called latin uh the because th they were latin yeah they were latin people they were the latin ethnicity basically from the latin ethnicity kind of complicated yeah i yeah you feel me you you get you you get it yeah i guess you understand it and the story of Rome begins, you know how it begins, with Romulus and Remus, uh, that were brothers, they, they blah blah blah, they were uh, raised by a wolf, uh, then, uh, then they decide to create a city for themselves, uh, they were arguing about it, where should they build it, how to call it, things like that. And in the end, Romulus had enough of that shit and killed Remus. Yeah, you know, the basic... Yeah, I, I mean, hey, you guys have killed your brothers once to, in arguing of a city, right? Just a normal thing, basic things, you know. <laughs> so the year is 753 BC. Rome is now a city, a town kinda something it's something Rome exists Rome exists that's for sure it exists and now in this year it started existing because Romulus okay it was kinda begun from both Romulus and Remus but Romulus did most of the other work that remained after he killed Remus so so <laughs> they just follow Remus <laughs> Romulus, excuse me. And again, uh, Roma was pretty much a small city, and everywhere other there were big civilizations of people, like Etruscans, Greeks, 
goals aka cells you know and also rome was very good at expanding his population he they were just Rom, romulus will just uh, accept everyone every uh, every man that had uh, that had a uh, uh, not a good past in another city or civilization and they will come to Rome aka Roma How they will call it and still call it till this day in Italy or Romanian and other romance languages or languages related or languages That aren't weird like English Why the fuck English calls it Rome? I don't know so anyway they were very good at getting the population growing. A lot of people that were criminals in other cities, uh, they were abolished from their own cities they're coming from, and they saw a new future in Rome. Re Rome gave them a new opportunity and a new chance. They love that. And that's why a lot of people came there. And a lot of people, by that, I mean a lot of men, there were men everywhere, like 99% of the population was full of men at the time. So it kind of, was kind of a manland, they probably also had some gay sex, most probably, I mean the Greeks did it. So why should the Romans do it when most of their populations were, were uh, men? So yeah, probably they, they had gay sex around there, most probably. Or maybe there are, we're also arguing sir, on the two or three women that were living in the city. So they needed women. They needed women in the city so they can reproduce. And so the the cities the city will have generations coming after them. And so they set something up. They invited their uh, was enemy city. Uh, of Rome, which was the Sabines, the city of uh, the Sab, the Sabines' city, the Sabines, the S Sabine, Sabines. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, it's pronounced Sabines, Sab Sabines. Apparently, yeah, English is fucking weird. I hate it sometimes. <clears throat> yeah, they invited the Sabines on their. On, on a lunch, on a party w with with the Romans and stuff like that. And the Romans pretended they're, uh, they're drunk at one point and they waited until the Sabines actually got drunk themselves too and passed, passed off, but passed, passed out, passed out from getting too drunk. And they were like, ha, users, ha, <laughs> dumb bitch. And they're, they are and then uh, the story s says that they run uh, Sabine's, the, to the Sabine city and they stole, they kidnapped every single, uh, every single, single woman in the city. Like every, every woman that didn't had uh, a boyfriend or a, or a, or a, um, actually not boyfriend, they didn't have boyfriends back then, a uh, husband. Any woman that didn't had husband would be kidnapped by the Romans and will be taken in their city for production, obviously. And yeah, it's also this is known as the rape of the Sabine woman, uh, even though it wasn't really a rape. And it actually comes from the Latin word for for kidnapping. kidnapping. So yeah. And of course, they started a war between Rome and the Sabine city. And the story says, the legend says that the woman, the, the single Sabine woman that were kidnapped by the Romans, um, came in the middle of the battle before it began. And we're like, no, we don't want to be uh, widows without a husband, but we don't want to f be fatherless either so they made a compromise and united rome and the sabine city and now rome had two leaders romulus and titus statius until uh, eventually titus statius uh, died and only uh, romulus uh, had to you know get take off or uh, take care of rome 
until Romulus died eventually, him too. And after he died, the Sabines in the city, they're, they're like, okay, we need a Sabine leader now. You had, we just had a Roman leader under, under our city for a very good while. So I think the next leader will be a Sabine city, a Sabine leader, sorry, a Sabine, Sabine leader. And the Romans were okay with that. As long as they voted who was the next Sabine leader of Rome, because after all, it's also their city too. It's an union, this. This is an union, so yeah. And the guy who was elected was Numa Pompilius as the, as the king, which ruled between the years uh, you have on the screen. <laughs> And he basically founded the what we call today the Roman religion, the Roman mythology. Well, basically, was a religion at the time because people actually believed in it. So he founded the Roman religion, which we all know it was basically stolen from the Greeks and uh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Eventually, he died. Of course, like any human <laughs> eventually he died so uh, goodbye Numa um, <clears throat> yeah and he was replaced with this guy Tullus Hostilius which ruled between the uh, years on the screen <laughs> and basically he is known because he was a uh, he was a conqueror he was a very hostile man that's even his name says that Tullus Hostilius that's a very hostile man if you ask me very hostile basically what he did he conquered the city Alba Longa which um, which is where Romulus and Remus Remus were born and also other cities other cities other big cities called Fidanae and Fidanae I don't know how to pronounce it and Vey yeah and uh, yeah, he was he was uh, a conquer conquest. Uh, he liked conquering. Yeah, a conquering, gumping man. We're we're doing how German does. We're inventing words out of words that already exist. Nice. And he died eventually, of course, like any human, any king of Rome. <clears throat> and he was replaced with Ancus Marcus, uh, ruled. In the years on the screen, as in the years BC, yep. By the way, he was Numa's grandson or something like that. Yeah, he was Numa's son, if I remember correctly. So basically, he really has that king blood inside him, legally, and and uh, bloodly. Yes, I, he also established the city of Ostia. Ost Ost Ostia, I don't know how to pronounce it, which basically gave Rome an access to the sea. And now we come to this guy. His name was Lucomo. Lucomo was an uh, was an his father was a Greek. He was a Greek. Greek. He was Greek. Yeah, and he married some some. Uh, uh, yeah, Etruscan woman. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, Etruscan woman. Huh. The Etruscans didn't like him because he was Greek, and they were racist at the time. So yeah, they were very racist with ethnicities. They didn't. They they weren't racist with the skin color. They were racist with the ethnicity. Oh, you were born in Greece. Ah, oh, disgusting, Mike. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, you animal shit. You were born in Germany? Oh. Ugh, how can you even live? Oh my fucking god. And also he changed his name to Lucius Tarquinus. Because that's that's an Etruscan name, I, I guess. After after his the city of this Etruscan city he came from. So yeah. And uh and he was very welcomed by by our friend uh, Ancus, 
he was very welcomed by him. And Ancus liked a lot, liked uh, Lucomo, aka, uh, um, aka Tarquinius, Lucius Tarquinius, a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, he liked him a lot. So he would let uh, Tarquinius uh, be the the guard of his uh, of his two sons and uh, stuff like that. He liked he liked uh, Tarquinius a lot. And eventually, he was uh, he died. He eventually died, of course, like any Roman emperor and stuff like that. So. Uh, Tarquinus was like, yeah, kids, uh, was to Mar- Ancus, Ancus's kids, was like, yeah, kids, uh, go a bit out, outside, I will take care of Rome, you're kind of young, I'm gonna take care of Rome for a while. Okay, he didn't really say that, uh, shit like that, he would just said, okay, uh, go, uh, I'm gonna do some stuff. Yeah, that's basically how, what he said. And he became basically the new king of Rome. Tarquin the Elder, known in the history of Rome as... Eventually he was... Uh, he was... Uh, yeah, he was assassinated with an, with an axe right through his skull by, uh, by An- Ancosus' kids. Uh, yep, very gorish, I know. Um, but then his wife told everyone that ha, <laughs> Tarquinius, he's okay. <laughs> he's he's very okay. He just he just uh, he just has some minor injuries. He's gonna be uh, better later. I'm I'm telling you. I'm telling. You, he's gonna be better later. And she secretly uh, made uh, her son-in-law Servius Tullius. Uh, to be the king of 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 Rome, yep. He secretly made Servius Tullius the king of Rome, which eventually the Rome, Rome find that out, and uh, they they just uh, were like, wait wait wait. So this guy was was king all this time. Well, what do we do now? I mean, I he's already been king. I I have. I want to have a problem about this. I want to be mad, but I'm not mad because nothing bad happened after uh, under his rule, and they just they just were like oh, okay. Yep, and uh, I think the video gets very long uh, already from here, so I'm gonna stop it here. So yeah, this is the first part of the about the Roman Empire. <sighs> yep. See you in the next video.